everybody, it's Andy Timmons, and I'm holding the ATZ100 Ibanez signature Andy Timmons guitar we put out a few years ago now. And it's essentially an extension of my original AT100 that I have traveled the world with since 1994. And, uh, but this is uh, with a modernized uh, roasted maple neck, and, uh, but it very much feels like my old guitar. This basic guitar here was a prototype um, very famously, I can look at the, the, the serial number, and it was built on Valentine's Day, so it's February 14th, 1994. And it was, I was going through a process with Ibanez of, I'd been working with them since 1991. I was in a band called Danger Danger, and I had signed up with a company. Um, and they essentially said that we want to build you your ultimate guitar. And I literally didn't know what that was. You know, it's just at a point in my career where I was, I was just lucky to have a guitar. <laughs> you know, just anything with six strings, please. Um, but uh, it, it essentially landed on, a, I had this old neck that was either a Chandler or a Warmoth Parts Strat kind of guitar. I said, I'd start with this neck. I like this neck a lot. And they just kind of put it with an, one of their body shapes, an RG, I think it is. But I like the vintage, you know, S-style guitars, but I need some modern am amenities too because I was, especially then, a heavier rock player. So I needed a humbucker in there. And we had a beefier bridge, this uh, Trev Wilkinson design. It's made by Goto now. But uh, we just kind of got it right. And this is the first one they put together once I had the idea of, I like that vintage neck style. And uh, one of my friends at the company at the time, Bill Comiskey, was, so you should try these cruiser pickups. They're kind of, they sound like a strap, but they're humbuckers, so they're noiseless, you know? So I like that idea, and it matches well with a humbucker design. So that's where it all started. You know, that's how it started, and here's how it's going. <laughs> and so this is really an extension and even going even back more kind of vintagey, you know, more even even more vintagey, I should say, with now a, for, a, for, for the first time in many years a, a three single spaced uh, Ibanez guitar, um, and it's beautiful because you know it gets a bit more into that vintagey kind of twangy thing. <laughs> Then I can roll, I can roll that uh, the tone off and still get. Still plenty of variety of tone, um, and with the neck that I love, love so much. Yeah, I couldn't could be more pleased with <laughs> what they've done. You know, it's fantastic. I mean, I certainly love every specific guitar with the S style, T style, Les Pauls, whatever, whatever it might be. It, they all bring out a certain part of your personality. But in general, I'm, I'm I don't want to have to switch guitars all night. I like having a guitar that I, I is going to be as versatile as I need to, as I am during my show. So. It's, it's awful handy when that's the one guitar you're not having to change all the time. So that's, that is the core um, goal for me, is to have something that I can really cover, you know, such a wide variety of stuff with, you know. And that certainly has fit the bill since that very first prototype. Literally any guitar, I could walk into the shop and pick up any guitar, and it's probably going to send me in a particular direction. However, my, my, my physiology and physicality of how I play connects with that particular design and that neck shape, you know. Big hand versus small hand, wide neck, narrow neck. My necks are, are a bit narrower. I have pretty average size hands. But I like the way that I'm able to wrap around when I need to. I like having that, that ability to have the thumb involved, you know. Um, but the, it's all going to inspire you to do a certain thing. That, but the thing with a guitar that's capable of such a wide variety of tones, you can go in a lot more different directions. And that ultimately is, is what I'm looking for. I want to be able to go where my heart and my ear, you know, is wanting to go, right? So, and obviously with the blessing of a, an assortment of gadgets to help achieve all those tones because, you know, some guys can, can play all night cable into the, you know, in, into the amp. And there's a lot to be done with a volume knob and a pickup selector. And I love that too. But, you know, over the course of a set of my own music or any, any set of music you might do, it's nice to have... When you imagine that sound that you want to have it, you know, as, at your disposal. So between your your experience with how to draw sound out of just the instrument on its own without any amplification, then whatever could be added to that to, to further get to that vision that, that we're all kind of going for this grail tone, whatever, spe however specific you get with it, you know, whether you're thinking about Hendrix's tone or Stevie's tone or Eric Johnson's tone. There's all these kind of benchmarks you might have in your head that you're going for at any given moment. You know, or, or whatever, however you envision it on your own. It's not always based on 
what's come before you. But that certainly forms where we'd like to go, I think, you know. In general, on my, on my main old guitar, I tend to stick pretty much either, you know, neck position or bridge. I'm going a lot between the two. But this guitar works really well in some of the middle positions, too. But if we were just to start with like a neck pickup clean tone, which I spend a lot of time on the neck pickup. That's one of my main tones from just real, you know, real clean stuff. And the pickups are real dynamic too. I, I can get quite a bit of a variety of gain. But if you want to go to the set, that fourth position, I guess. We'll get into some of that vintage. Next, uh, a straight classic second position. Plenty of power when you get to the uh, to the bridge position. It still has a good twang to it too. So anywhere, anywhere from real pretty glassy clean tones to the heavier lead stuff, I can play all night on the one guitar and be real happy with it, you know. I mean, it, it all just takes time and nothing replaces just fingers on the frets. That's where your sound comes from. And, and I should even back that up a little further. It's, but it's the ear, you know, it's your ear and what, what, all the sounds and stuff you've taken in and all your favorite players, your favorite tones, that all gets stored, you know, and that starts to collect into who we become. You know, but then it's then it's the experience of trying to draw those sounds out of out of the gear you have. And traditionally, most of us start off on gear that's not that great, which is actually pretty great for you, because you know it makes it harder for you to get a good sound. And that's that's a good challenge to have. Um, then, of course, as we progress, and hopefully, you know, with the blessing of either a generous parent or hard work, whatever it might be, that we're able to kind of upgrade along the way. But as, as you all watching this know, there's there's always the next pedal or guitar we need to get to that place, right? You know, we're always, that's the beauty of what we do. We're always kind of chasing um, this nirvana of tone, whatever it might be, this, this goal that we have. Um, I'm getting a little off path, but all that to say is the advice is to just, just to keep playing because so much of it does come from you. So much of it does come from the time involved, the effort put forth, and then you learn a bit about, okay, well, man, if I had that pedal or if I had that particular guitar, it might get me closer to. Um, I, I had a beautiful experience with my son who's 18 now, started playing guitar when he was 16. And I had this little uh, solid state, nifty 50, Dan Electro solid state little amp. Just see, here, kid, play with this and this old, you know, Bronco from the 70s. Here you go. And he, it's got a, kind of a, you know, mid-game distortion on it. He was having fun, but dad, just doesn't sound right, you know, because he was listening to Slipknot and Metallica. And I'm like, I'll be right back. And I go upstairs and I grab an old DS1 Voss, you know, come set it down, plug it, and he goes, Dad, that's it! <laughs> you know, so he was having to kind of go through, oh, it's not quite it, you know, and you, 
you start searching for that that the proper pedal or the proper guitar that sends you closer to what you want to do. But it's the combination of all that and that beautiful path and, and journey we get on. And I'm 59 now and it's still going, man, you know. I'm still swapping out tubes today and trying to get the pedal set right and it's I love it so much, you know. And it's always it's it's frustrating but it, but there's beauty along the way cuz we never quite get exactly what we want, but it's that it's that that regular effort of going for it and trying to figure out, oh man, well, what was on what was on Eric's board that day when he recorded that that solo or whatever it might be. We're all you know, trying to sniff around and figure out what we can do to get closer to that. And this isn't my guitar, by the way. This belongs to the store. This is just a stock ATZ100. But I know that because I didn't cut corners at any point during any design of my guitars, it had to be exactly what I wanted. And I wanted that to be what's available to everybody else. But that being said, I'll still choose that guitar. If I, if I can have that guitar on the gig, I'm going to play it just because there is that relationship because I've played it so much. It's been refretted. We've, we've fretted it. We think eight times. It might be nine times. So it's been, it's been through a lot, you know. And I have other, other prototypes and versions, versions of this guitar that actually probably sound a little better. Just, you know, every piece of, couple pieces of wood stuck together, you know, they're all going to sound different. But there's that connection. There's the, I call it my whoopee, and it's kind of like that, that security blanket. I know, I know I'm going to do well. But again, they just set this guitar up today at the, at the store for me and uh, feels amazing. I mean, I feel completely at home. I could go play the show right now and be happy, you know. But that's the thing. I, I never wanted to have a piece of signature gear that was not exactly what I use. You know, growing up in the 70s and 80s, we'd see these guys in guitar magazines. You know, he, he doesn't play that guitar. He doesn't use that, you know. He was just doing an ad, you know, for whatever reason. So, so I really, you know, it was, even starting with the, the first version of that came out in 1999. They did a limited edition where they made like 175 AT100s. But that was it. It's like, you know, and, you know Andy, we could, you know, we could make it more affordable if we changed this. And I want to do that. It's like, you know, I want, it to, I want it to be exactly my guitar. That was really important to me. And I would love for you to be able to check out this ATZ100. Just call your Sweetwater Sales Engineer. Mm -hmm.